Your next talk is coming from Radislav Bali. Radislav is based in Copenhagen and is the lead designer for an organization called A Wizard. Now, A Wizard have an amazing product which takes your paper prototypes and turns them into tech prototypes for users to start playing with. Now, in this session, he's going to be discussing why exactly it takes so long to turn your ideas into real life products and hopefully offer a few shortcuts thanks to their amazing piece of software. Enjoy the session. Hello everyone, my name is Rosal Bali. I'm a lead designer at Wizard and today I'm going to talk about why it takes so long to turn ideas into live digital products and how we can speed up this entire process. First, a little bit, little bit about me. I am originally from Slovakia, but I have been living in Denmark for the past five years. Throughout my career, I have been working for different agencies and startups. And for the past two years, I have been working at Wizard, where we are trying to make the best prototyping tool ever to help you guys validate your ideas much faster. All right, let's dive right into it. So to better understand why turning ideas into live digital products takes so long, we have to look at the workflow. On a high level, the ideal workflow would be you have an idea, you design it, code it, and ship it. But in real life, the actual workflow in product development involves more steps, plus you need to communicate with many different stakeholders that you need to go back and forth with. But maybe some of those steps could be automated. Let's start by looking at the ideation phase. Depending on the organization, the ideation process is often referred to as a design sprint or a product discovery. It's a great method that helps you build a solution for to, to existing problems. A design sprint typically runs for five days, where one of the most important goals is to deliver a functioning high fidelity prototype at the end. Within the brainstorming session in the design sprint, you typically sketch to generate ideas, you know, and to get the creative juice flowing and basically everything what's in your mind to get it on a piece of paper or something. And actually, according to a survey conducted last year by UX Tools, it was shown that 86% of people still prefer sketching by hand using pen and paper or whiteboards for brainstorming and ideation. Because Design Sprint uses strict timing, sometimes you don't get a lot of time to explore many ideas, but rather you have to be quick in deciding which idea is the best to go forward with. Once the idea has been decided, you go back to your computer and here you start transforming your wireframe and sketches into a high fidelity prototype. This can be very time consuming because a lot of attention here goes into manually recreating user interfaces in a design tool. And you know how designers could be sometimes we spend way too much time picking the font or picking the right color. But how are we certain that the idea we decide to prototype is the best solution? We are not. In this phase, it is unlikely to have enough data, so there cannot be made any informed decision before the idea has been tested or validated. It is, of course, also good to focus on only one idea at a time and explore that, but what if there was a way to quickly prototype and test maybe five ideas or 10 or even 20? What if there was a shorter bridge between ideating and validating? What if there was a way for teams to test and validate their ideas in real life? So actually, we built Wizard to solve exactly these problems. So Wizard is a prototyping tool that leverages machine learning to convert wireframes into digital prototypes. And in order to estimate exactly how much time you can save using Wizard to build a prototype, we conducted a study. We hired online freelancers to build a high fidelity prototype from free wireframes. So we sketch free wireframes, which you can see on the screen. And then we just put some requirements for the freelancers. So 
The prototype should be high fidelity, so they were supposed to turn those wireframes into high fidelity designs. The content images could be anything, the style could be anything. They were given complete freedom to basically change the font or color or what kind of style they want, anything. The textual content could be anything as well, and they could use any tool method they want. The freelancer were asked to record the time it took to create a prototype for reporting purposes only. It did not affect their compensation as they were actually paid on a project basis and not on an hourly basis. Here you can see actually some of the results we got back. And within the study, there were two things we were interested in learning more about. Number one, it was to measure how long it would take a designer to recreate a high fidelity prototype in a design tool using their components of choice. Number two, it was to measure how long it would take a front-end developer to actually implement a real high fidelity prototype with front-end code. Well, by looking at the data, we learned that it would take a UI UX designer an average of one hour and eight minutes to create a high fidelity prototype and a front-end developer one hour and 54 minutes to implement a high fidelity prototype with front-end code. But by using wizard, it would only take them two minutes and 50 seconds on average to get both high fidelity prototype and a real front-end code in the same time. So on average, that's a 24 times speed increase for the designers and a 40 times speed increase for developers. That's insane. These results came from creating a very simple free screen prototype. Then imagine how much time that can be saved building a prototype made of 10 or even 20 different screens. And if you look at the workflow now, you might be thinking, okay, there is actually some search steps which we can skip because you can go from wireframing directly into a the prototyping or into a front-end code. And now you might be thinking, well, but isn't this my job? And, you know, we are getting a lot of questions like, will the AI replace us? And perhaps there are some of you out there that are wondering the same, and we have a lot of people writing to us that the AI will replace them and are questioning what's the purpose even for them to spend years studying in university if at the end machine can do all the work for them. But that's not going to happen anytime soon. And you should think more of it as the AI here is to empower you to achieve data and results faster, which gives you more time to do other things that are also important. To also put this on a little bit of funnier note, to show you actually some results from last year. So my colleague Javier was building a classifier. And the only purpose of the classifier was that if you are sending a picture of your wireframe to wizard, the classifier was just supposed to detect if the picture is actually a wireframe or something else. So if you upload a picture of a dog, it should give you a, a message this is not a wireframe, please upload the wireframe. And he was so confident about the classifier that I decided to try and hack it or break it. So I went around my apartment and I just started taking random pictures to just see if it actually goes through. So here are some of them. So here I took a picture of a keyboard where it went through or uh, my panini grill <laughs> or just like a kitchen napkin and then uh, it's a picture of my uh, <laughs> of my tattoo over here. So and this was just like a year and a half ago. So you can see that sometimes the AI can be unpredictable and can give you results even out of nothing. But let's look at how the platform looks right now. So I can give you a little demo. All right, let's go to the platform. So if we go to app.wizard.io, as you can see, I already created our future sync organization. Let's create a new prototype. Let's call it future sync. And let's go for a mobile. And uh, let's try cozy.be create. 
And now we have an option to upload our wireframes. So I already prepared some wireframes, as you can see. Those are actually the same ones which we use for the study with the freelancers. So I will just go to my mobile version of the app and I will upload the pictures. As you can see, it's already uploading. It takes around 20 to 30 seconds to do a conversion. And we already have everything. So our first screen, second, and a third. If we look at the wireframe, we have uh, all the elements converted. That's perfect. Also over here, and also over here. Now we can start doing some modifications if we are unhappy with uh, our conversion. So for example, we can click on a stack over here and we can align it completely to the top. Or we wanna change the content of our buttons, which we can call the button for now. Over here we can just say, and then uh, this one we also want to align to the top but let's look at the theme because maybe you want to change the overall color of the theme not to be orange but something else and so if you go back and we click on our themes and we click on our cozy theme so as you can see over here I have all the elements so I have a uh, your colors, typography, buttons, images, containers, four components and icons. And I can just easily modify this one if I want to. Let's go for some blue. Perfect. I can see my buttons change as well. Everything is linked. But what if I want a completely new thing? Let's just go back, create a new one. Our, oh, just go to the Let's pick some new color. So we can go for something like this. We want a sun serif, and then we want sharp corners, and then we want border, and then we want no shadow. Let's create a new one. And then, Let's go over here. Let's modify some stuff. So we want this to be black. We have a Google Fonts API, so we have all the Google Fonts over here. So they are accessible to you. Then we have this one. Let's change the text color to be white. Maybe actually we don't want a border. Images and containers. And now we can go back to our prototype. Let's go back to our prototype, future sync, and then we go on the themes and I will just switch it. Switch themes. And now I want this to be a title. Content. Title. And now I can start creating different links. So I want this page to go. So let me go to the prototype mode. I want this page to go over here. This button to me over here. This button to me over here. This one should go over here. And we can play it. And we have a quick little prototype. If you want to add some comments or you want to share the prototype with someone so they can add you some comments, it's super easy. And you can just be comment. And if you want to code out of it, you just go to the code mode. 
refresh. And we choose HTML. Sometimes just a refresh can fix everything. And then I click uh, on the page. And as you can see, I have it all here. You can also customize how you want it. If you have a spaces or you want tabs, you can apply that. So if you go back to our presentation, uh, here, that was it. Thanks a lot. If you want to join our beta, please go to wizard.io slash futuresync. Right now we have over 100,000 people who sign up and we are inviting new people every week. So if you go for this link, you will be on priority. So you'll get invited within the next week or two. Thanks a lot. Bye.